One thing I wonder if you've ever heard about, um, right. which I've done, uh, I did a little bit of research on a while ago because I used to be very depressed and I was looking into sort of alternative um, mental health treatments, um, and one of which is now becoming mainstream. And also, I remember seeing a lot of anecdotal evidence in forums and stuff about it working for tinnitus. Okay. Um, have you ever heard about people taking magic mushrooms for tinnitus? <laughs> <laughs> I have. Right. I have heard of this. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I uh, I know myself well, well enough that I think the damage of just taking the mushrooms one time <laughs> would probably outweigh the positives of potentially curing yeah. tinnitus. Now, I got rid of the ringing, but also I had a horrible trip, and uh, now I have to reevaluate my entire life. So, <laughs> yeah, no, that is really interesting, though, because, I mean, what you're touching on there, I guess, Luke, is that this kind of comes down to perception and psilocybin, the active ingredient in magic mushrooms, is a hallucinogen, which obviously is something that influences the subjective, I guess, perception you know, that's going on in your brain. Well, the stuff I've read about in terms of how it works um, is, it, it, like, I, I've read about it in terms of, like, it also helped someone with a stutter. Mm. Um, it helped someone here who hadn't heard for quite a long time. Um, and what, essentially, what I understand, I mean, obviously, anecdotal stuff. Yeah. I don't, like, the, the studies So you're saying in, don't just immediately no. leave, go down, find find a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but, but basically, the way that I understand it to work is that what it does is it, um, it increases the ability of areas of your brain that don't normally talk to each other to talk to each other. And that's why you get things like the hallucinations and um, synesthesia, like um, the crossing of different senses, because basically uh, pathways in the brain that are normally cut off from each other or down, like sort of, um, what's the word? D not downregulated, but suppressed, mm -hmm. right? Um, are amplified or at least allowed to talk to each other in a, in, a, in a different way. And what can happen, as far as I understand it, is that when you then come back, like when you come down from that, your brain, like the the order of the signals going around your brain can settle into a different way, into a different order than than the way it did before. And so if you've got an area of the brain that's either generating like an electrical, obviously it would only work for the ones that are generated inside oh, yeah, of your yeah, head yeah. and non-rhythmic. Not, not, yeah. yeah, non-rhythmic. Um, if you've got some area of the brain that's generating some kind of electrical signal and that is crossing over an auditory nerve or it's ending up in some area of the brain that deals with sound, you could resettle back into a way where that's not happening anymore. And either the signal's not being generated or it's just the circuit's changed. Um, now, obviously, I'm talking here about the brain in like an electro... Like as like an electrical, uh, like a circuit, yeah. which I don't know if that's totally accurate. But <laughs> neither do I, so you're fine. <laughs> but that's the sort of gen, my sort of very layman's understanding of seeing like subjective. Um, and also, we've done a bunch of psychedelic research. Uh, sorry, we've done a bunch of research into psychedelics <laughs> for Psy guys. Like we did, we've done no, lots you've of reading. Really... Psychedelic yeah, research, well, man. Just... No, but it's interesting. I mean, just you... look at Corey's. If you're listening, if you're listening, and get to the YouTube channel, look at Corey's uh, shirt here. I'm wearing this for look. I mean, he's he's loving the visuals he's getting from Woo! this. No, to be fair, it would be a hell of a podcast if we all took mushrooms and by the end it had cured. Oh my god! But <laughs> oh, I think what's interesting about this is that if we look at the sort of drugs that have been sort of trialed for this, they've not not necessarily work, they can't be reproduced later, and they work about as well as placebos, which is interesting because, you know, a placebo generally only works for something that um, can be influenced by the body to an extent, right? Something that's more subjective than it is a literal objective thing. Mm. You're not necessarily going to get rid of your cancer uh, based on a placebo, but you'll maybe get rid of, mm. say, what is it, sort of some sort of psychosomatic issue, right? Now, if tinnitus is caused by like these sort of um, uh, this sort of, I guess, sort of neurochemical issues in the brain, electrochemical issues in the brain, um, you could see that a placebo might actually affect that, considering that it, a lot of it is based on perception and you might start to tune it out a little bit more. I mean, I'm not saying that the psilocybin, the magic mushrooms there are, uh, are placebos, but mm. what I'm saying is that when it comes to perception, it gets really, really difficult because, I mean, we, we tend to think of you know, the reality that we experience as being objective, right? What you see with your, you know, seeing is believing. That whole concept essentially can only work if you think that what you see, what you hear, what you smell, taste, all of these things that you sense are objective representations of reality. Tinnitus is just one of those things that shows you, <laughs> nah, yeah. nah, your brain's just making up, is just, is not making stuff up, but it's just interpreting all the stuff that's being sent to it, and you're understanding that, and you have no real way of delineating between what is there, necessarily, and what isn't. That's why, you know, these two 
realistically very different things of rhythmic and non-rhythmic tinnitus are classed under the same thing because until you go in and try and like figure out, okay, well, where is this rhythmic noise coming from? They are the same experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's why like when my tinnitus gets better, it's because I'm not thinking about my tinnitus regularly. And obviously that's a little bit of a, like a, don't think about an elephant. What are you thinking about mm. now? I'm thinking about a rhinoceros, actually. Oh, that's, well, I'm, thinking about, I'm thinking about tinnitus. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's obviously very difficult to convince yourself to not think about something because that's counterintuitive, but that is the best way of doing it. The best way of tuning out is it's, just do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's my recommendation. Just, just do it. Just stop thinking about it, idiot. <laughs> yeah, for, obviously, for people, there's different levels yes. of intensity. Yeah. But again, it when it comes down to something that is based on perception, it it's just really bloody. It, it's just really bloody difficult to have sort of set, um, I guess, uh, treatments or a cure or whatnot because it is something that's subjective. It's going to be different between different people. You you can't be as objective as scientists usually try to be when trying to tackle this problem. Mm -hmm.